Hello there, yours truly, CLJ, with very special and candid document tell all about yours truly and why the way the way I am and what you see from me, what I create and what you hear. Super special shout out to the one, the only, the meowsome, the nerd at newsstand, where she made and presented her story, document tell all. This is for you and others with ears to hear. Now, where to find her? I got your back, Jax and Jills and all that. Now, let's begin for a very longest story, true events, and fact about yours truly. From my nation's capital, I've seen all my social media platforms and profiles. From the mid-80s, 1984, and the March of 4th, from a tough-loving, avid outdoorsman, hunter, fisherman, backpacker, you name it, who back in the early 80s, he was in the Air Force at Lackland uh, Air Force Base in Texas. And years later on down the road, he was a police officer, made it to sergeant for the Washington, D.C. Metropolitan Police. He was a fan of James Bond, 007, Sean Connery, loved black exploitation films like Dolomite, Blackula, Foxy Brown, and Chav. And all the macho, macho man from the balls with the balls to the walls, shoot him up, kicking ass and chewing bubble gum, high octane 80s action adventure flicks and romps like Arnold Schwarzenegger, Sylvester Stallone, Bruce Willis, Harrison Ford, Chuck Norris. He was a combo. His personality was a combo of James Evans from Good Times and Carl Winslow from Family Matters. He will always be my number one action hero. They fail in comparison, all of them. Here's to you, Daddy O, R.I.P. The big boss, man, that was, and a wrestling. Oh, oh, he loved the wrestling. His nickname was the Big Boss Man. Yeah, now to my mama, she's a Southern Belle, you know, beautiful, quiet, smart, shy, and wholesome. Total opposite from my dad. And I'm actually the middle child of the Jackson family, two elder brothers and two younger brothers. No relations to Michael, Samuel, Randy, Jesse and action. I'm an 84 baby, so late 80s, you know, uh, when I get the became who I am. And then uh, tragically, sadly, unfortunately, uh, Papa passed away. Uh, W.O.J. is what we want. That's his name. W.O.J. passed away in 2003. And currently, the more or less, you know, we live paycheck to paycheck. You know, responsible. That's pretty much everybody, how everybody was in the D.C. area, you know. And plus, this was in the 80s, by the way. So, yeah, rough, very rough. But it is what it is, you know. We never had no family vacations, but then again, we wasn't rolling in the dough. We didn't have those. We was lucky to go out of state, you know, let's just say that. You know, no, we had, I mean, we had some, you know, income, but it wasn't, you know, again, paycheck to paycheck. You know, Papa was a cop. Mom was retail fast food, you know, bouncing back and forth. And now back to 1988, 1988, where it all began from me and what you see before. A nerd at newsstand, she talked about what was her escape from reality. Now, uh, now mine is it wasn't harsh, but it wasn't all light, rainbow, sugar, and sweets either. I was a 180 of what you see today, ladies and gentlemen. You know when it when the uh, when the reality did struck with some harsh, you know, you know, crapola and all of that. I escaped to movies, cartoons, and video games when we had them, which was the fuel driving inspiration to my original sketches, characters, and their stories. Because back then I was terrible at doing fan arts at the time. Yes, I was. I was terrible. Heavily criticized for him, but you know what? It made me to become original at what you see now. Since 2019, what you see before you, my indie company that I'm built that I built up from the ground up, I call CLJ Oats. Oats stands for Original Arts and Tales, and CLJ is my full name that you see on all of my platforms. In elementary school, all I did was draw, told stories of people who was interested to hear. Even the teachers were very interested. I caught their attention and all that. I was very animated, compelling, and telling them. Everything else I didn't care for had zero interest in them. I even hated going to school, to be honest. So, yes, so yes, I dropped out at 17. You know, that's why it took me until 2019 to pass the, you know, 
go Rocky Balboa, go the distance with the math section with that GED test. It was a very, very Ivan Drago tough nut to crack. But I originally gained that GED back in 2004, 2005, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. It took that long, but with a very special super shout out uh, to my uh, tutor, uh, we'll call her, uh, 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 we'll call her Coach. This to you, Coach. What a glorious victory that was in life choice correction, talking about correcting your mistake. In hindsight, I never changed, and I'm still the same person. I was very excellent and skilled in handwriting, language, verbal, and arts. Missed opportunity that I never took up theater. I would have excelled in that. I did have opportunity back in middle school, but I shunned them off. Ah, boy, why did I do that? I should have took up theater. I really should have, because hindsight, look what I'm doing now, huh? I was on a collegiate level at, at the age of 10 with writing and speech. No, I wasn't perfect. I was known and, you know, uh, uh, I had a very, very bad idle mind. Let's just say that, you know, um, you know, uh, if I have no direction, I'm all over the place. You know, I was very smart aleck. I was kind of a class clown. I was talkative. But sadly, I had a chip on my shoulder and, you know, I would do some harm to people. Let's just say that if I was angry and I had a very short fuse. In fact, if I'm quiet, that's a bad sign. And why I don't have, you know, that's pretty much why I don't have a lot of friends and followers from childhood or now. You know, uh, yeah, uh, you know, uh, Nerdette talked about like uh, her, her comic book, you know, adapt, you know, her comic book favorite, uh, how she drew to it was Batman. Mine would be Wolverine, James Hewitt from the X-Men, mostly from the cartoon because I didn't have comic books back then, but definitely Wolverine. Absolutely. Yes. You know, and as and as an adult now, I'm starting to become like Tony Stark from Iron, uh, Tony Stark Iron Man. Now to my uh, walk with faith and leap of faith and walk with faith. Before I made my personal choice and believe in the Christ, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, the Christ Jesus, Yahshua Mahamashia for you, uh, for the Hebrew Israelites and, and Jewish folks. Let's just say I was a uh, you know early. I was a very I was a loose cannon and explosive. As of when my dad passed away in two, 2003, that's when God said, "Enough, I'm saving you." from any more harm that you will inflict from your dad's passing. Because I did have anger issues and all of that because, you know, seriously, you know, off topic, therapy is paramount. Therapy needs to be mandatory. Therapy needs to be free. And yeah, I know, you know, uh, I got a bachelor in this. I got a doctorate in this, but therapy is a lot of money. And, and uh, especially for, you know, for men and kids and boys yes very very it needs to be mandatory it really does but yes and so i finally you know uh 2004 i finally came to make the because before 2004 i i wasn't at a christian i didn't care for god i didn't care for none of that i was you know uh, i wasn't a rebel you know i was more like a quiet storm type of thing a quiet volcano if you must you know, to, to say, so I came to that decision, leap of faith and accepted, accepted the Christ Jesus. Since then, no more afflicting pain, no more hurting people, no more fighting, no more antagonistic behavior and no more grief. That's why I stayed clear. And that's why, you know, uh, with my words of wisdom, I, no online debates, no keyboard warrior in, no armchair politicianing. No heated arguments because do, even during debates, I like to listen and learn. Yeah, I like to listen and learn so so then I can become better. I don't want to become no Pharisee. No, there's too many of them out here. Way too many Pharisees. No, no, uh, I need to be like Christ. I don't need to be no. There's too no. I need to be like the Christ, not the Pharisee. So thank God and praise the Lord that I have no more crave. And um, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I like the and uh. Thank God and praise the Lord that I had no craving for alcohol. And, uh, and with my parents, too, there was no alcohols, no drugs, none of that. And and remember, 
I'm from the late 80s. Well, mid 80s, early, you know, from the 80s and 90s where crack was whack. But that didn't stop black people from getting very whack. But you know what? We all know how them drugs got there, too. So let's be real here. okay? let's be real here. Let's not be pointing fingers at black people when we don't own still to this day, don't own Columbia. Thank you. Thank you, mom. Thank you, dad. And, you know, we had our troubles. I mean, all families do. We all have our ups and downs. We all we all do. All, all of us. There's not one person on this planet. I don't care who you are. We all had our ups and downs. And, you know, it was light to moderate. And, you know, and then uh, we kissed and made up and forgave one another. So thank you for protecting me, even even when I didn't care for you. Uh, Christ Jesus, Yahshua Mahamashiach, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Dad who's watching in heaven, and Mom who's still with us. And also, back to the comic books thing, I'm not into them. I'm not into anime or magna. Still to this day, I've never owned any volumes, watched any of them, I own any books. My knowledge and love for them came from movies and video game adaptations. You know, mainly the video games. You know, with you know, with the comic book character and team up. Even if uh, even if my work show, I was not into anime or comic. I wasn't into none of them. Closest thing to any of that would be I read the Sunday newspaper funny pages. That's it. That was all. But I read a lot. I mean, a lot. I read entire encyclopedias, dictionaries, Britannias, manuals, maps, pamphlets, magazines, menus, etc., etc. And yes, I will draw on them too and get in big trouble for them as well. And my cartoon designs and inspirations are, of course, got to give credit where credit is due. Hanna-Barbera, Don Bluth, Old School Disney, Warner Brothers, and recently, you know, J. Scott Campbell, to a degree in Angle. But during the 90s, it was mostly them. Hanna-Barbera, Don Bluth, Old School Disney, and Warner Brothers. Mm. Yeah, and uh, movies, you know, cable, yeah, all that good stuff. So that's where inspired. That's where uh, what you see, you know, what you see is what you get. And I'm just teasing, but yeah, and those are my inspirations. And also during the '90s, you know, uh, I posted her uh, recently. I'm a uh, Claire Constance from the Gigaton Network Soldiers from 1992. Well, originally I was just drawing them out as characters, and then over the decades, that's where her story began to. You know, to uh, mature. Yeah. Now, in my um, now my book that's for available for purchase, the Steampunk of Tinselheim, that was originally uh, penned back in 2012. I published it in 2019. So during Claire Constance and the Steampunks, I created over a hundreds, over hundreds of CLJOs of characters that you all will see and read about sooner than later. Come next year, I'm going to start writing their books and all that. And give them, and, you know, give them like their uh, art galleries with it. When I why I wrote the same puzzle just time first, uh, which is a four parts, a uh, four part saga. By the way, legend, it's all done. I have to get them in their PDF forms because back in 2019, believe it or not, I have not told nobody that. Believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, yours truly try to go for a Hollywood position as a script writer. You know, uh, uh, with several of those script writing contests where if you won, you began a career in Hollywood. Luck, uh, you know, thankfully, luckily, and I was protected and I lost several of them. And I'm glad I did because it drove me to continue my script, The Steampunks of Tensorheim, and to make my own Hollywood and company. Why do I need them when I am here? God did not make me to be a follower. He made me to be a leader. And that's what I'm doing. You know, you know, because the lack of black original content creators is next to none. So I'm going to help build that block. So, yeah. So uh, and then uh, and then I'll continue with my, you know, with the script of the Steampunk of Tinselheim. And it evolved into a four part book series. Also, what you see on, on my channel introduction. So, yeah, and um, even back then, I was a homebody, you know, I wanted to protect myself from harming other people type of thing, and pretty much, my greatest fear is similar to what Wolverine is, and again, I did not read none of the comics, just the cartoon and the video games. So, yeah, so that's why I was pretty much just 
I know what I'm capable of, and my biggest fear is hurting someone that I know. I know, Sandra Wolverine, and again, this is, you know, unrealized, coincidental, so that's why I'm a homebody and all of that. Still am, where the, pan- where the pandemic 2020 lockdown was like a summer vacation for me. I was already used to isolation, and that's where I found my peace, and so that, that's where I found my peace, my solace, my comfort. I was happy, you know, back then, of course. You know, every time I was alone, I was at peace. Now I have the Christ with me. I'm always with someone, and someone's always with me. Also, with the powers of social media, the positive edifying side of it, I kept in contact with you fine folks, and where I began to build a new world, vlogs. All my vlogs from Cooking CLJ, Creating CLJ, Critical CLJ, Words of Wisdom with CLJ, Homebody with CLJ, Gaming with CLJ. Even when I step uh, step outside in the real world, Outdoors with CLJ. I think that's all of them. Cinematic with CLJ, that's right. All of them came from the lockdown, just being up in here. And for real, you know, I wasn't fond of being outside, you know, and also living in the hood too, you never ever go outside when the sun sets, even when the sun is up. Because, oh yeah, oh yeah, I wasn't bullied because I made sure I took care of them. Oh yeah, I never was bullied, and they know not to mess with me. They know that for a fact. Yes, they do. Boys or girls, I had I was equal rights and equal lefts. Yeah, but then DC isn't what it is. What it you? It is not what it used to be either. Gentrification. Google that word, ladies and gentlemen. Gentrification. I'm gonna put it down below. It changed it. It went from from a quack as whack to diamond in the rough. A very expensive diamond too. Very very expensive. I mean, the demographic change, it went from, and I'm not making jokes here, from dark to white, from dark to light. I'm not kidding. Just go over there. You have to see for yourself. It is a whole new world over there. So, yeah, so my home was my safe haven. And so I just draw, watch movies, cartoons, play whatever game we had for Nintendo, Sega, more like all of them were all rentals at, you know, uh, Renner Center. Uh, what was the other one? Renner Center. Uh, Woolworth. No. Because them games were expensive. People were talking about some uh, high-priced games now. They were high-priced then because the average uh, of hour, uh, 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 the average hour, you know, pay uh, per... And how you say this, ladies and gentlemen? Uh, you know, you, people was getting paid about... Three dollars to four dollars an hour back then. Video games were like forty nine dollars. So for somebody to get a forty five a forty five forty nine dollar game, oh, you had to work at least thirteen hours. So no, I was no game collector. You know, I wasn't until I was old enough to work, and I was in the early two thousands. Yeah, and yeah, and. So, so that explains why I don't have no toys and no toys, no collectibles. My room is very, very professional, like, and but yeah, no toys. All my games, I keep them inside a CD case because I don't need no boxes for them. I just need the game, not the box. I don't do collectibles. I don't, I don't do none of that. No, because I grew up. You was lucky to have a game for about two weeks. So yeah, I was very, very limited. But, you know, it's all good. You know, that's what raised me to be humble, meek, thankful, and all that good stuff. And come to 2023, you're going to see more. At, uh, uh, you're going to see more of me and my works and all that, the vlogs, the CLJ Oaks. And thank you all for allowing me to take your time out of your schedule and day to hear my story. And here's to you, I've never that newsstand for this, for, you know, for uh uh, for inspiring me to do this, and yeah, this would be a nice little Christmas, uh, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Holidays, little uh, uh, gift for you all, ear gift. 
Uh, thank you all, and may you all have a wonderful, most excellent, beautiful, and glorified, safe and blessed and sound. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. And happy holidays. Until next time. This now concludes the video and hope that you enjoyed and thank you for stopping by and please give this video likes, share this video, comment down below and until next time, peace, love and happiness. Happy watching.